Hello friends, I am Chevy. Welcome to my shed. How are you today? How's life in your world? How's things where you are? I hope it's fantastic. Everything here is great. I hope you had a good weekend. I definitely did. Uh, and I have the Kindle with me, which means we're going to do another book review. And this time we're talking about Stephen King's Holly. Uh, this is his most recent book. I think it came out last September. And it's also, uh, well, because it's his most recent, it's the last book that features Holly Gibney in it. Um, and I wasn't intending to read this when I set out on this King rampage over the last couple of months. I was really intending to stop at The Outsider, but then I, you know, this, it, this continues, the character was interesting enough to me to continue reading, uh, and I felt like the investigation part, you know, this is more of an investigative story, uh, I was looking for that stuff for my personal, my, my writing, this has all been research, right? So I've been on a tear, I've read like five or six King novels in five weeks, that's a lot, that's a lot, a lot. <laughs> And um, I don't always read this heavily, obviously. I, I, if I did, we'd be talking about books a hell of a lot more here. But I feel like I'll probably read this heavily for a few more weeks and then I'll burn out for a while and, and something else will capture my attention. It seems to go this way. Every, every couple of years, I, have a, I just go on a tear and just read all kinds of books. Um, but anyway, I wanted to talk about Holly because it's, a, it's been a pretty divisive book. Um, uh, most King fans put it at the very bottom of their list that I've seen. I did go look at other reviews. I don't normally do that. I very, very rarely do that. But I had a feeling, I didn't look at reviews before I read this, I had a feeling it would be a divisive book for a lot of reasons, not just the preachiness that's in here. Uh, but I, I know that from, from looking at other reviewers, a lot of King fans are just kind of burned out on Holly. They don't get her. They're not interested in her. She's, she is a very quirky character that has, um, a lot of obsessive mannerisms and, and, in you know, whatever, that's fine. Don't, don't enjoy her as a character. I do enjoy her as a character. Uh, and I think that's the reason why I enjoyed the book. The book is more of a treatise on, uh, human evil and, um, uh, it, it's less of a investigation. Like, we know as the reader who the killers are right up front. We know what they've been up to. We know what, you know, we know that we know their story from the beginning. So it's not like there's a mystery for us to solve. It's just for Holly and crew, Barbara and Jerome and Pete to figure out. Uh, but more importantly, I feel like of all the stories that have featured Holly Gibney, this story had the most contained growth for her and I had an emotional connection with her in this book. Uh, I had zero emotional connection with any of the characters in the Mr. Mercedes trilogy or the outsider, uh, which is typically with King, I do have emotional connections with characters, but for this run, I haven't, it just hasn't been interesting. Uh, but this one I did. I actually got choked up a little bit when she kind of came out. At the, she she broke, something snapped inside of her for a very good reason, which we'll get into during the spoilers. So I looked, I, I did some reviews because I was curious to know, I felt like this is not a Stephen King novel. This is a very different kind of book, uh, but it does have Kingisms in it. Um, and so I went looking at it. And like I said, a lot of people think that it, it was divisive uh, because it, first of all, it's fairly preachy about vaccination. It's very anti-Trump. Um, it's very, it's weird. It, you know, I've said a lot in my King reviews. If you go back and look at, I don't know, the dozens of King reviews I've done on this channel over the years. Um, while his books are set in the present day when they're written, you know, and they're set in, you know, he wants you to feel like this is, a version of what we're going through right now. Uh, his characters are not. His and his ideas are not. He, you know, he's still stuck in the '70s, and so are his characters. So there's a lot of weird things in here. The anti-vaxxing stuff. Yeah, it gets a little annoying because, like, by the end of the book, you're like, can we just not talk about it anymore? There's these weird things like characters when they meet each other. They're like, you double vaxxed? I'm Moderna. What are you, Pfizer? And you're like, 
what the hell is going on right now? That was not my experience with the like that never happened in the in ever. Maybe with family, but not with strangers. But that's all through this book. You can stop wearing that thing. I got there was just none of that. But in the book, there's a lot of it, and so it did get a little annoying. Um, but also because I felt like this was just a character piece for Holly, and not so much a investigative. There was not really any horror. There was a little bit of creepy weirdness, but it wasn't. It wasn't horror. It wasn't suspense. It was just kind of a book. Uh, it was a character piece about Holly, and for that, I enjoyed the read. Um, I'm not going to say I enjoyed it more than The Outsider. I don't think I did. I think it was about equal for me, but I enjoyed it more than the Mr. Mercedes trilogy. I personally felt like that trilogy was pretty weak, um, but uh, this I felt was it was cool. So uh, that being said, I realize I might be in the minority here. Um, if this book is like split in half, it seems like. Uh, and based on the review numbers that I see on like Amazon and Goodreads, like the majority is, eh, it's just garbage. Um, so not my experience. And I'll tell you why. Uh, well, I can tell you that Saturday, I started the day on Saturday. I, my Kindle said I was at 52%. So I was halfway through a I don't know, six or 700 page book. I don't know how many hundreds. I, it was, I think it was at least 650-ish, somewhere around there. Pretty big book. I was halfway through it on Saturday, 52%. I finished it Saturday evening. I just didn't want to stop. Like when it got to the near the point where Holly started to kind of come out of her shell, it picked up pace and I was just like, I was in it from that point forward. And I think that's why I enjoyed it so much. Uh, the opening was a little meandering, but not not nearly as meandering as a lot of older King novels are. Uh, there was less meandering in this book, I feel like. Um, most of the stuff in here had a purpose, uh, and that felt pretty good. So after this, we're going to talk about spoilers. So if you don't want to hear spoilers, go somewhere else. Um, I thought the old couple was an interesting villain. Uh, you know, a, a couple that have convinced themselves that eating human flesh and brains can cure Alzheimer's and and sciatica and arthritis and whatever. Uh, I thought that was pretty cool. Um, the fact that they had put together this whole elaborate method of, of gaining, of obtaining victims and using them, that was interesting. Um, I liked that they were respected faculty at a at a college they were phds or whatever they were th that was cool i i enjoyed them i enjoyed them as a villain um i enjoyed barbara and jerome's kind of side stories uh, i enjoyed like getting caught up on all of that but i also felt like a lot of barbara's side story could have just been left out it was just extra fill i did say earlier that it didn't meander a lot but there was a, generally every time we got to see Barbara talking to her mentor, or working on her poetry or whatever, there was at least something like Hollywood. You know, it was it was the idea of had Holly and Barbara talked about the case, they would have solved it days earlier than they did. Like because Barbara had pieces of information she didn't know she had. Holly had pieces of information she wasn't trying to burden Barbara with. So that, that was kind of a fun little, like, man, if you guys had just talked about the van, if you just talked about whatever, like, this piece, this puzzle would have came together much faster. And it just never happened. So there was some tension in all of that. And that was interesting. As, as a reader, every time you cut to Barbara and she's working on poetry or doing whatever uh, with her mentor, I don't remember the mentor's name, you're like, okay, this is going to be the time when Holly tells her, right? And we're going to get, this, this thing's going to get on the road. Never happens. So that was, there was, a, it was an interesting way of, you, you know, King would give you a chapter of Holly doing whatever, we would cut to this Barbara sequence, and then I'm the whole time like, all right, is this going to be the time? And it was just fun that it never happened. They never connected. Barbara had to f solve the case on her own, which was fun, uh, but it also felt a little bit hokey. Like, okay, whatever. Um, I was I was thinking like, in the past they've had trackers on Holly's phone. They at least have access to her iCloud or something, so they could see the pictures of the van that she took. Like, why didn't they try to pull that up? Or, like, do they not have 
Life 360 or something? Do they not have Find My Phone? Like, do they not have any of that stuff turned on as a safety precaution? Um, that would have solved the case faster or whatever. But it, in the end, it, it was okay. Like, Barbara figured it out pretty quick, and we didn't really need King to understand that stuff in order to make it work. And in fact, it gave us a little bit more Holly time uh, as a captive, which was fun. Um, I felt that the ending was not rushed, which was good. A lot of times I feel like King's endings are rushed and his villains are not given a good end. They're given, they're just kind of like, and then the villain dies. And then you move on with your life. It, like the villain wasn't, the we didn't care about them. Like it, that's how his his books work. And I get it. Like the book isn't about the villain. It never is. It's about the growth that the characters are going through. Uh, but sometimes I feel like th we've talked this villain up for 500 pages and then the villain just goes and does something stupid and dies or whatever. Uh, that just always feels a little bit like, really, you couldn't have given the villain at least a fighting chance? Like, <laughs> they they always seem to be like, you know, they just fall apart. Um, in this case, not so much. Uh, we did get a little bit more of a satisfying ending. We got one of those, like, if I tell you, you know, before I kill you, Mr. Bond endings, where the villain's going to tell her all the things before they kill her, uh, which felt, eh, like... At this point, you've already got her captive. So if somebody knows something, they already know. Like, there's no point in keeping her alive. You're not going to let her live. So why did they keep her alive? There was, like, I, we need to get information from her? No, you don't. Like, you, you've already fucked up. So either people know or they don't. I don't know what they were expecting to do. I guess... They're older and not thinking clearly, fine, whatever. But that was a little bit mucky. But at the same time, I enjoyed the exposition. I enjoyed uh, the doctor guy talking, you know, the nutritionist talking about why he does what he does and getting upset and then, you know, Holly killing him or whatever. Uh, Holly killing two people in that moment was interesting. Um, that, good for her. Like, she really became something else in those in those moments. Uh, and, and that was fun. But I I enjoyed the book. Is it... In my top King books, no. Uh, probably not even in my top 20. But I felt like it was a good read. And I'm glad I read it. And um, I don't know what I'm going to read next, but it's probably not going to be King. Probably pick something else. I don't know what yet. You have any suggestions? You should let me know in the comments. Uh, I think I gave this book a 4 out of 5. Think so? Sounds about right. That's where I'd put it now after having this discussion. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thank you for being here as always. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing, being amazing friends and wonderful people. I really appreciate you. And I'll see you again tomorrow. <clears throat> Today's word you should know sounds smart is tractable. as an adjective meaning easygoing, easily managed. The occasional kind comment seems rather enough to keep our servants tractable. <laughs> tractable. T-R-A-C-T-A-B-L-E. Uh, do you have to be tractable? Uh, do you have to keep your servants tractable? Like, I don't know. Maybe just treat them like humans? Why do you have servants?